Hi everyone, I'm Graham Gerdeman, and welcome to this episode of Graham Gerdeman Nashville Birder, my spot on YouTube to discuss all things bird. Today I'm going to talk about one of North America's most loved and celebrated birds, the purple martin. I was fortunate to spend a lot of time with purple martins this year as I was asked to help document uh, their successful nesting at a breeding colony at nearby Warner Park Nature Center in Nashville, where I was able to witness the birds' North American life cycle from when they arrive in the spring to when they depart in the fall with the building of nests and raising of young and fledging in the middle. I, it gave me a much deeper sense of understanding, uh, a more intimate sense of the birds' lives. I'd like to share some of that with you. Purple martins are the largest members of the swallow family in North America, family here in Dinaday. Adult males are unmistakable, entirely covered in dark purple-blue iridescent feathers, which often will appear entirely black. They have a forked tail, which is much more shallow than a barn swallow's deeply forked tail. Females have a purple head and back, but their breast and belly is white and streaked in gray. As you can see, they eat insects. They forage on the wing high in the sky, often hundreds of feet in the air. It's a misconception that they feed on mosquitoes, which are almost always low to the ground. Purple martins are what we call secondary cavity nesters, meaning they don't dig out their own holes. Rather, they rely on finding existing holes. Historically, that would be old woodpecker nests, but for thousands of years, humans have provided housing for purple martins to encourage them to nest around crops and eat pests. Early Native Americans hung dried and hollowed out gourds for them to nest in and commercially available plastic gourds mimic those today. Over the centuries, and especially since the Industrial Revolution, uh, deforestation of large old growth forests in America was virtually complete. Purple martins in the western United States still nest in holes in trees and cacti, but east of the Rockies where most purple martins live, uh, nearly 100% of them are dependent now on man-made housing like this. Adult purple martins begin returning to nesting sites as early as mid-January on the Gulf Coast and as late as the beginning of May in New England and southern Canada. Young birds which hatched the year before come later. They build their nests out of available twigs and straw, and they construct a mud wall around the nest, which likely serves both to protect the young from predators, as well as possibly preventing them from falling out of the nest. When the nest is complete, it is lined with fresh green leaves. These nests are lined with the leaves of a nearby cherry tree. Throughout the nesting cycle, the only maintenance on the nests once they are complete is to regularly remove these leaves as they brown and grow old, and they're replaced with fresh cut ones. Eggs are laid on top, one per day, and incubation is done entirely by the mother. And then, they hatch. These babies are around two days old, they are helpless, and they are hungry. While incubation is only done by the female, both parents take up the task of bringing food. And bringing food. and bringing food. The young grow incredibly fast and they are going to fledge and leave the nest only around one month after hatching. 
flinging themselves out of the nest hole to fly for the very first time. This is not a young bird fledging. It is actually another adult female being evicted by the mama. Eventually, all of the surviving young have fledged. They may come back to the nest for a few days to rest, but soon these gourds are empty. And what happens next is one of the most spectacular events in North American birding. Before flying south to Brazil for the winter, purple martins come together. They gather in the evenings in huge roosts, as many as half a million birds or more. One of these incredible roosts occurs around Nashville, Tennessee annually, but in 2020, they descended on the downtown area and into the trees around the home of the Nashville Symphony, the Skirmerhorn Symphony Center, and presented an incredible sight for tourists and locals alike. The symphony management was extremely open to protecting these precious natural resources. To help cover the costs of cleanup from all of these birds, the Nature Conservancy of Tennessee and the Tennessee Wildlife Federation teamed up and collected more than $10,000 from bird lovers and birders across the state. After a few weeks of roosting, the birds move on. They will fly thousands of miles to their winter homes, mainly in Brazil, to feed on the insects of the warmer tropical climate before making the long trip back to do it all again in about six months time. Thanks for joining me for a few minutes to talk about Purple Martins. This is my first full video for this YouTube uh, series. I really hope that you found something that you enjoyed. If you liked the video, please click like and subscribe and share it with a friend. If you'd like to be notified when I add new content, then use the little bell icon to click notifications for when I add new video. I'm going to try to end these episodes with a few moments uh, of nature. For this first episode, I would like to leave you with a few minutes of the incredible sights and sounds of the Purple Martin Roost in downtown Nashville, 2020. Thank you. Good birding. <laughs>